Hello guys, <coughs> welcome back once again. This is part three of our WCF TCPIP duplex communication channel chat application. This part we just bang on straight from where we left off. So if you haven't subscribed, I suggest you do. You hit the subscribe button straight away. So we just go in straight away. So the, we just initialize the variable. If we don't have, okay, we call our, we get our call back here. Then we set that to operation contest dot current dot get callback channel. So we pass in the I service callback. So, so here we check if the callback is not empty. Then we could add it on um, the client dot add user dot user ID. And um, and a callback. So the next bit, of course, is uh, we're going to say um, users dot add. Then we add a user, and then we could say clients dot we check if it's not empty dot to list dot for each see for clients for each client c dot value dot user connected so we pass in our users and that's all we've got to do for now very simple stuff so the next bit of course we go to the send um, the send message and we resolve that as well so the send message bit here we have a variable we call it send to and this will be uh, clients check if it's not no but first C for the client, so we look for the client. C where C dot key is the same as message dot the two user. Then we can check if the send to is not empty. Then we can say send to that value dot dot value dot send to dot value okay just a sec Okay, I've <coughs> actually resolved it by adding a value here, so it's kind of weird, but hey, let's get it going. So we could say send to dot forward to client, then we can pass in the message. So as you can see, we can use the no propagation, which is absolutely bonkers to me. So we come inside it the program dot cs so we can just con we just resolve our our service so we say variable the uris is equal to new uri basically we grab it and we pass in just one in this so we could say string adr for address this will be our net dot tcp colon 
two forward slashes. Uh, local host. Colon. So we could add a. F we can add any port. So we could say six five six five forward slash uh, message service. So that would be our service. The next bit, of course, is we say our message I message service. This will be our service. And we instantiate it, so the new instance of it. So the next bit will be our service host, and this will be our host, and this will be the new instance of our service host, which we pass in our service, and then our URI, IS. So before we do anything, just after the address, we say a URI. So we just get the first index, then we pass it to, we just init a new, then ADR for address, and we should be good to go. So right after our host, this is what we'll do. We add another variable, we call this one binding. And this will be our new net TCP TCP binding. And we set the security mode to none. The next bit of course is we say our host dot we add our service endpoint. And this will be type of um, our iMessage service, our binding, and just an empty, or we could just say string dot empty, whatever. So the next bit, of course, will be uh, we open our host, host the open. Then we could actually just subscribe to this event so we could just say host the opened so we could just subscribe to this bit here so we could just say our uh, TCP service started so something simple like that would be nice. And we can just say console.reline. So as you can see, it's very simple, not very difficult. So this is what we would do. First, before we go ahead, we would try and run it to see if everything works out nice. So we, we, we set this bit to our startup project and we can just run it. So I will just pause it while I run it. So I hit that start button and there we go. Boom. A big ass error. So we just pause it here. Okay, so I've got it running now. So we just have a look and see if we can get our services up and running. So I'm just gonna pause it while it, it runs. If you if you continue from here, it might prompt you to allow firewall. So I suggest you do that if you want to continue, obviously. So as you can see, we've got our console app started. So we just wait for them. So as you can see, our TCP service started and we've, we've been prompted by Windows Security for that firewall acceptance. So we allow access just like this. So I'll leave it here and continue the next bit, like building a doc the desktop client to actually consume all the services that will be coming out from our, our, our WCS service. So if you've enjoyed it, just hit the subscribe button and catch up on the part four. Bye-bye.